Hey there, wild minds. Welcome to Flora and Fauna. I'm Flora, and if you guess that has something to do with plants, you're totally right. (laughs) And I'm Fauna. My name means animals. So yep, you've got it. I'm all about creatures that hop, fly, slither, or swim. Together, we are plant and animal-obsessed guides, and we're here to dig up facts, sniff out stories, and branch out into the wildest corners of science. Whether it's how a plant gets its name, why an animal acts a certain way, or some super weird legend from history, we're here for it. So leaf it to us. And let's get wild. Today's episode is all about nomenclature. (laughs) Yeah, that sounds like a spell from a wizard school. But it's actually a super important science word. Nomenclature means the system of naming things. Like, how do scientists name plants and animals? Ever heard of Ilex vomitoria? Or Turdus migratorius? Don't laugh. Those are the scientific names for Yaupon holly and the American robin. Ilex vomitoria sounds like A puke potion! (laughs) But you can think of it like a full name for plants and animals. You have a first name and a last name, right? Exactly. Well, in science, the first part of the name is the genus, like a last name that a whole group shares. The second part is the species, like your personal first name. So the American robin's name, Turtus migratorius, means it's from the Turtus genus. And its species is migratorious, which means it migrates. Okay, Fauna, real talk. Who looked at a plant and said, let's call this one Ilex vomitoria? Right? (laughs) It sounds like something a wizard would say while sneezing. Well, the person who got this whole naming system going was a Swedish scientist named Carl Linnaeus more than 250 years ago. Linnaeus was like the Beyonce of biology. He wanted to organize all the plants and animals into categories that made sense. Before that, names were super long and messy. Like spiky green bush with red berries from the marshy woods of Carolina. No thank you. So Linnaeus came up with a system called binomial nomenclature, which is a fancy way of saying two-name naming. Kind of like how humans have a first name and a last name. Exactly. The first name is the genus, like your family name. The second is the species, kind of like your personal name. So for the Yalpon holly, its science name is Ilex vomitoria. Ilex is the genus, the holly family, and vomitoria is the species, the specific kind of holly. But why Latin? Why not Swedish or English or emoji? Great question. Latin was the language scientists used in Europe back then. It was like the universal science language. Even though nobody really speaks it anymore, it keeps the names consistent all over the world. So a scientist in Texas and a scientist in Thailand both know exactly what plant you're talking about, even if they speak different languages. Thanks, Linnaeus. You may have worn a giant wig, but you also gave the world a brilliant system to keep nature organized. Binomial nomenclature. Weird name. Super helpful. Okay, Flora. I get the two-name thing, genus and species. Makes sense. But why do scientists use Latin? That's not even a language people speak anymore. True. Nobody's texting in Latin. But there's actually a good reason scientists picked Latin. And it's not because they were trying to sound fancy. Really? Then what is it? First, Latin was the language of science and education in Europe way back when people like Carl Linnaeus were naming plants and animals around 250 years ago. So it was kind of like the official nerd language of the time? Totally. And because Latin wasn't changing anymore, since no one spoke it as a first language, it was super stable. That meant the names wouldn't get messed up or confused over time. Oh, I get it. If everyone used their own language, like English, Spanish, or Japanese, we'd all have different names for the same thing. Exactly. But if we all use Latin, 
It's like science has one big shared language, even if you're a scientist in Brazil or Botswana. So Latin keeps it fair, clear, and global. Boom! Nailed it. Latin, the language nobody speaks, but every scientist understands. So let's go back to the scientific name for Yaupon holly plant, which is Ilex vomitoria. Yep, vomitoria. It sounds super gross, right? Even in Latin. That name was given by European botanists, especially one named William Aiton in the 1700s. They had heard stories from early explorers who said that Native Americans drank a Yaupon tea and then threw up. But here's the thing: the tea wasn't what made them sick. They just used vomiting as part of a ceremony. The botanists didn't understand the culture and blamed the plant. In a time of powdered wigs and leather-bound notebooks, a curious botanist named Aiton was studying plants from the New World. Hmm, Ilix something. <laughs> what shall I call this new shrub? Lovely red berries, shiny leaves. But wait, what's this? Sir, I've just returned from the Carolinas. The native people drink a black tea made from that very plant, and then they puke all over. Puke, you see. <laughs> Fascinating. Disgusting. But fascinating, clearly. Ilix vomitoria. <laughs> a plant that causes vomiting. Excuse me? That's not what happened. The tea is full of caffeine. It's like nature's energy drink. The vomiting was ceremonial. Not my fault. Ilix vomitoria it is. <laughs> it shall go in the book. Forever. <sighs> Great. That's going to be on my record for centuries. So the vomitoria part from Ilex vomitoria comes from an early explorer who thought it made people vomit. Spoiler alert, it doesn't. Unless you drink like a gallon of it. Yaupon is actually a kind of holly bush with caffeine in it. Native American tribes like the Caddo and Creek made a tea from it. They called it the black drink. And the American robin? You see them all over the place with their orangey bellies. But did you know they're not actually robins? They're thrushes. Early European settlers saw the red chest and thought, hey, looks like the robin back home. But science says Turtus migratorius, totally different bird. Right. The two birds aren't closely related at all. The American robin is a thrush way bigger and louder than the tiny robin redbreast of Europe. So the American robin, like the Yaupon plant, also got its name because of an error of the early European settlers. They thought it looked like the European robin, which has a red breast too. So why did they call it robin? In the 1600s, a ship full of settlers arrived in the New World. They missed home, and they missed the little red-breasted robin of England. I wonder what that conversation was like. A bird. With a red chest, it must be a robin. Oh, thank heavens. Something familiar. Who, me? I'm Turdus Migratorius, thank you very much. Thrush family, born and raised. You're a robin. Just like back in Yorkshire. Excuse me. I'm the real robin. Small, polite, and very British. Well, I'm big, loud, and I can eat a worm in one gulp. Guess I'm the American version now. And so Turdus migratorius became the American robin. Not because it's accurate, but because it made settlers feel at home. And guess what? The robin loves to hang out near yopon bushes because the berries grow in winter when other food is scarce. So they're like accidental besties. <laughs> robin, mmm, free snacks. Yopon, you're welcome. Ready for a wild tale? Always. Before we dive into today's story, here's a little background. This legend is inspired by Native American traditions and the long relationship between birds and berry plants in North America, especially the Yopon holly. While this story isn't from one specific tribe, it's a blend of natural facts and folklore-style storytelling, like how many legends help explain the world around us. In winter, when many plants go quiet, the yopon holly shines with red berries. And guess who shows up to eat them? Robins. 
The story imagines how their friendship might have started a long, long time ago. Long ago, in the heart of the forest, winter had come too early. The rivers were stiff with ice and the sky wore a gray frown. Deep in the woods, a robin named Redbreast was searching for food, for himself and for his three hungry chicks. Yes, I said he, American robins are very progressive. Father birds help take care of the young too. There must be something left. I've flown over the cedar hills and down the frozen stream. But the ground is bare. And my babies are waiting. Where will you go now, little bird? I don't know. But I have to keep going. For them. Also, I take issue with you calling me little I may be small compared to other species, but I am considered a grown-up bird. He landed near an old tree, whose roots held stories and whose bark had seen a hundred winters. Redbreast, you fly on tired wings. Rest here, if only for a moment. I can't. There's no time. My chicks, they're cold and hungry. Then listen well. Beyond the bend, near the sleeping creek, stands a bush with bright red berries. Not many creatures know it, but they remain sweet even in frost. <gasps> berries? In winter? Redbreast followed the wind and found a small green bush with berries like drops of fire. Hello there. Hungry? Wait, you can talk? <laughs> Only to those who listen. Go on, eat. These berries are bitter but strong. <gasps> They're not sweet, but I feel stronger, warmer. That's the spirit. Take what you need. And if you like, drop a few seeds as you fly. Let others find me too. Redbreast flew back to his nest, filled his chick's bellies, and sang the story of the winter bush. In the seasons that followed, he returned again and again, each time spreading yopon seeds across the land. Never forget the bush that gave when no one else could. And so, even today, robins visit yopon bushes every winter. Red meets red year after year, and the bond between bird and berry lives on. I love how the yopon helped the robin when times were tough. <laughs> and how the robin gave back by spreading its seeds. That's teamwork. The wild world is full of wild friendships. Okay, it's time to quiz it up. <clears throat> Question one. What does nomenclature mean? A, naming system. B, magical creature. C, a type of dinosaur. D, unicorn dance. Question two. What is the scientific name of the American robin? A. Chicken Nuggetoos, B. Turdus Migratorius, C. Birdius Pecus, D. Robinius Featherstein. Question 3. Why is a Yaopon species name Vomitoria? A. Because it smells like vomit. B. Because someone thought it caused vomiting. C. Because it's scary. D. Because people throw up in its leaves. Question 4. What does the robin eat from the yaopon bush? A. Leaves. B. Twigs. C. Berries. D. Caffeine tablets. Question 5. What does the scientific name Turdus migratorius tell us? A. That robins love poop. B. That robins are travelers. C. That robins are gross. D. That robins sing karaoke. Answers, please. Number one, what does nomenclature mean? The answer is A, naming system. Number two, what is the scientific name of the American robin? The answer is B, Turdus migratorius. Number three, why is the Yaupon species name vomitoria? The answer is B, someone thought it caused vomiting. Number four, what does the robin eat from the yaupon bush? The answer is C, berries. Number five, 
What does the scientific name Turdus migratorius tell us? <laughs> the correct answer is B. Robins are travelers. Migratorias, migratory. Science names may sound weird, but they help us tell the difference between a bear and a berry. Thanks for listening. Remember, every name has a story, and sometimes a bird or a bush behind it. Stay curious, wild ones. Life's a dance and it grows and grows.